So what we're going to do in this video here is just break down another rendering taken from our SketchUp model into V-Ray and then do a final concept rendering very similar to one of the earlier videos we had posted. This particular project is in Memphis, Tennessee and what was interesting about this project to us was this was taking an existing Sears distribution center and repurposing the building into a vertical community. So we had retail and grocery store on the main floor with a college campus on the upper floor, uh, offices, workout facilities, and then residential above. And it was one of the first uh, architectural prototypes of this kind to be designed in the US. So this was a really fun project for us. And what I'm gonna do is take you through how we went from this SketchUp line work into the final rendering here um, for this particular shot of the project. So let's go back to the main Photoshop file here. So as you've probably known by now, we have a few steps that we always do for every rendering. The first thing we do is export hidden line line work from SketchUp with profiles set at one. And the reason we do profiles at one is what that'll do is it'll capture a lot of the roundness in some of your geometry that if you had profiles unchecked, you would lose. So set profiles at one in your styles palette and uh, then you can export out. This is just a JPEG clean hidden line export from SketchUp. So I'm going to turn on my layers here. So what we do when we're done modeling in SketchUp is we take it into V-Ray and you can take it into any render engine of your choice, but we particularly like V-Ray for the um, depth at which we can go if we want to and the speed at which it renders. And the nice thing about V-Ray, as I mentioned before in another video, is we can get really amazing reflections, um, textures in the concrete floor here, subtle textures in the wood, um, nice glossiness to some of our, our great pumpkins here, some of the chairs, uh, the cars as always are really great. And <clears throat> the point here isn't that we want a photo reel rendering. The point here is that we just want a really solid base for doing all our extra post work in Photoshop. So here is our V-Ray render. So then what we do is we bring in our SketchUp line work as a multiply layer on top of the V-Ray line work. So you can see here as I zoom in, all we've done is we've brought in our line work, move that on top of our V-Ray layer. I'm going to turn these back on, set that mode to multiply, and that gives us a lot of great uh, extra detail that may have been lost in the V-Ray render. And it also acts as a nice ambient occlusion pass in the Photoshop file. Um, so we, we really like using line work in conjunction with the V-Ray render. Now, one thing I'll note here is that this process was a little messy. Uh, there was still some design going on while we were pr producing the renderings. And so you may be wondering what all this extra line work was in the back. Well, to answer that, the client really wanted to show a grocery store in this particular view. And we had already produced the rendering without the grocery store. You can see this is just a retail hallway back here. So we went in and remodeled out of SketchUp and then added uh, the grocery store here. And now all I've done is I've turned on our new V-Ray layer here that shows that grocery store patched in. And that's how the rendering with the V-Ray and the line work is shaping up here. So the first thing I do typically with any rendering that I get out of V-Ray is I'll do a few adjustment layers. And all I'm doing here is making a few things pop that I want to pop, um, adding some light where I want light and dark. And in this case, it was mainly about the signs. I wanted the signs to stand out a little bit more from the background than they were. So, what I'm going to do now is just kind of go through some of the layers. Again, sometimes design is a really messy process and sometimes rendering is a really messy process. And you don't always have a linear workflow in every rendering that you approach. And so what's great about what we're showing today is that it's okay to be kind of messy. And it's okay to have layers that are unlabeled and all over the place because this is a really organic process. And I'm going to make as much sense as I can about um, how we constructed this drawing, but it's not always perfect. So what I'm going to do is just turn on 
uh, some trees. So what we did is we started dropping in some vegetation. I'll turn that on and off here. So these trees in the foreground are a little bit more uh, photographic in nature. You can see here that's a, a pretty, um, pretty real photo there. And then as we get back into the background, they get a little more painterly. So you can see that some of these are really painterly. And that kind of mimics atmospheric perspective in a way. Uh, things are going to get a little more gray, uh, a little more blurry, maybe some more blue to it as they move into the background. Um, so those were just painted in with a brush back here. And then some of these were photographic textures. So we have our trees. We can add our, let's see what other layers we had going on here. I did another adjustment where I brightened up the entire scene. So oftentimes I'll work with the base V-Ray file and just really get it to a point where I'm happy with the overall lighting and character. So apart from the adjustments I did here, which was popping the signs, I also really felt like this needed to get brightened up quite a bit. We were really going for a that kind of twilight magic hour shot here. So once I've brightened up the whole scene, it's easy enough for me to come back in and start darkening out some of these areas. So I'm painting in some evening color, and this will make a lot more sense as more of the layers come in, but we'll go ahead and leave that in for now. So we have the blues and the purples and some of the pinks of the setting sun now painted on the left, while a lot more of our whites, yellows, and oranges are emanating from the storefronts here. So I can add a little bit more. Going back, it's really important not to let the software dictate what the rendering is, is going to look like. Um, you're, you're in total control here of the machine and of your rendering. So this layer here that I'm turning on, layer 53, which is labeled so perfectly, um, what I'm showing here is, look, I'm just trying to show that this window is reflecting some of the more produce, right? Just to get a little bit more movement in the glass here. Is it exactly reflecting this food here? Absolutely not, but that's not the important thing here with the rendering. It's just to get a little more movement, a little more believability. You can see here as I start turning on more layers that I'm adding more detail back into the grocery store to bring your eye back into the space here so it feels very multi-dimensional. What I've done here is just uh, added another bush here in the foreground and that bush has been masked out um, using a, a layer mask here so that the well, let me just show you that if I disable the layer mask here you can see that the bush is uh, in the foreground and that's really not the the ideal condition here and we want that bush kind of down low behind the railing so if I just enable that again you can see that I've cut the railing out of there and uh, that allows the vegetation to appear like it's on a lower level. And this layer that I just turned on, you can see I have a very strong white line here, which is my horizon line, which came in from the V-Ray render. And it was very distracting to the eye to look at. So we're just filling that in. And essentially what I've done here, and we do this quite a bit in a lot of our renderings, is we go into Google Earth, get into Street View, where the project is taken, and then just do a screen capture of the condition at street level. We'll then bring that in, and oftentimes you'll find that the photos are of relatively poor quality and grainy, but that works perfect for background photos. It helps enhance the perspective. You know, things in the background aren't going to be nearly as sharp as uh, things in the foreground. So here is our Google Earth background that we've dropped in here to help complete our, our scene in the background. So as I start to think about people, um, one of the things that helps with perspective lines is uh, SketchUp, bringing SketchUp silhouette people. And that way you can match up your photographic people with the SketchUp silhouettes. In this particular drawing, I don't have the uh, SketchUp silhouettes in there, but what I did do was rendered out a few people in the V-Ray. So you can see here as I zoom in, those were actually rendered out in the V-Ray file. And then from those people, I'm able to uh, deduce where my eye line needs to go um, because we're basically sitting down in one of these chairs. It's a little lower than eye height. My eye line isn't going to be straight across the drawing. And what I mean by that is I'm not able to just drag down a line and say everyone's eye has to fall in that blue line. You can see that the girls here in the hallway are much taller. So I've now been able to draw in essentially construction lines that help me place people in the scene. So if I turn on the people 
here's all our people. You can see now with those red construction lines that I have there in the scene, they're all falling into place and they're all properly scaled because all their eye lines are falling on my uh, constructed red line there. So here are all the Photoshop people that we put into place. It was important to get people who are doing the appropriate activity. So we needed to make this feel like maybe there was a lot of uh, outdoor, almost farmer's market quality shopping going on outside the grocery store. Uh, there's people inside the grocery store uh, buying supplies and this all the entourage really had to work with the drawing out here we have some people on the bikes and, and a little bit more street activity so in the end having the entourage help reinforce the story of what activities are happening with your architecture is really important so after we've added in all the people we can continue to fill out our podium level here let's call it and so I've added some flowers, a little more activity. So we have a grocery store in the foreground and maybe there's a florist shop in the background. Now these flor flowers were just cut out from an image we found on Google um, and to avoid them feeling like they were just uh, cut and paste into the Photoshop file, you can see here that I've added just a little bit of lighting here to uh, the right side of the flower so it looks like light from the storefront is hitting them. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in and add just a little bit of shadow this is just painted in with a soft brush. It's a little bit of shadow that um, helps reinforce the idea that light is hitting it from the right and then pushing shadows to the left. You can add some grasses, again, just to help reinforce the story of um, some of the products out in the foreground of the grocery store here. Some fruits and vegetables. These are all photographic textures. As we turn on, again, just to go back, this is a very messy process right now because we are working in concert with the architects as things were getting designed. Um, and uh, I think, you know, on several tutorials, I'm sure that people have very organized layers. And, you know, I'm here to kind of laugh and show you that it's okay if your layers aren't all organized, labeled correctly, and stacked on top of each other. You know, this can be a very messy process and still be very effective. One of the things we like doing too is adding a lot of storefront glow. So if I turn on my glow layer, you can see here now that I'm getting a lot more thrown light from the storefronts that are kind of hitting the top side of the metal canopy here and down on the concrete. So that's just painted using an overlay layer. And then I'm using some lighter, warmer colors to um, replicate storefront glow here. And that really adds a, quite a lot of warmth and energy to the scene already, just that one layer. Um, another another bit of grass then is coming into the foreground. And uh, one of the things we really like doing as well is uh, throwing a lot of uh, <clears throat> light on the scene at night. So here's my lighting scene. You can see all I'm doing is adding a bit of bloom um, to all the light fixtures here. And there's a lot of different ways you can do that. You can bring in darker images and set them to screen. You can paint them in using an overlay or hard light layer. You know, as an artist, I really uh, always encourage people to find their own style and what works for them. But adding highlights on a night scene is a great way to add a lot of activity, a lot of movement, and a lot of richness. So we can turn off our eye line here. We're getting pretty close to being done. Um, I added a little bit of bloom here to the lighting, going back to what I just said, which is very fortuitous. Um, I used hard light here to uh, add bloom to those lights. So I didn't do anything with photograph. I basically painted on a hard, hard light layer, um, just some warmer color, just to um, simulate some bloom on those overhead lights. <clears throat> uh, looks like we patched in a little bit of a sign back here that was missing a sign in Photoshop. We're getting towards the end of the drawing where now it's just about adding some smaller details at the very end. One of the things we like doing to our renderings um, is adding a paper texture to the render file here. And let me, let me turn that on and off for you so you can see what we're doing here. Essentially what, what I've done is I've brought in a paper texture and set it to a soft light. And you can do whatever you guys wanna do to make it work for you. But what that does is it adds a lot of tooth to the drawing and it helps soften the photorealism of the drawing. Um, for a, 
effective concept drawings, if you get too photoreal too quickly, you're going to find that it doesn't really capture the looseness of where the project is in the design process. So one method is you can add a little bit of this texture to the drawing. So at this stage, we're really ready to flatten this Photoshop file. And what I mean by that is we're just going to save a copy without any of these layers. I'm just opening all these layers up so you can see just how messy and how loose and how unorganized some of these can be. Um, so we've probably got a hundred and I don't know, 150 layers in here um, that all are kind of working together to make this story work. And uh, so right now I can flatten that file. So if I flatten the file, I'm then left with something that looks like this, very similar. It's the exact same as what we just were looking at. And what you can do now is kind of do some global changes to the rendering. So for me, I felt like this drawing might be just a little bit too dark still. Um, so I'm just going to add some levels to brighten that up. And what levels do is they really push the whites and darks of your drawing. So if you open a level adjustment layer, you can grab these sliders and move them left or right that really help push your lights and your darks. So it's a small adjustment layer here. Um, I sharpen the image and there's a lot of ways you can do that to sharpen the image. You can come in and filter it and do a sharpen. And to me in my exploration, Unsharp Mask works really well. Um, but I'll let you figure out what works for you in your drawing. But all I'm doing is adding a little bit more tooth, uh, a little bit more grain and a little bit more detail to the drawing by sharpening it. And then it's really just about feel. So at this point, which happens to a lot of my renderings, I'll come in and just add a little bit more color and a little bit more of the ambient glow, uh, a little bit more of that kind of watercolor wash to the drawing to make it feel a little softer and warmer. So this is just painted on a layer with a paintbrush, some purples and oranges and blues. And that's really it. I'm, I'm basically, this last layer is just showing that I'm pushing the highlights just a little bit more here. You can see that they're getting just a little bit of a bloom. So if we go back and look at our flattened file that we brought in, this rendering is about 99% done. And then to me, it's amazing what you can get done with that last 1%. So I'm just toggling between the flattened file and the few moves that we made in the flattened file to really bring that drawing to life. And that is how we constructed this drawing for the Crosstown Project in Memphis. Thanks for watching.